the Smilo Cares Spring Series. This is the second year that I'm doing this, and um, I love presenting to you all. And um, a big thanks to Sally, too, for helping to organize this as well. Um, everyone, my name is Hannah Caridad. I'm the dietitian here at um, Smilo for Trumbull and Fairfield. And um, I'm going to be presenting on managing body changes after cancer treatment and, um, you know, kind of how to navigate, you know, the many different things that happen, um, you know, as you're going through treatment for cancer and, and kind of after too. So, um, and all about nutrition, physical activity and, and all of that good stuff. So I will start the presentation. All right. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see um, and hear me, but um, this is the presentation. So first off, uh, again, my name is Hannah Caridad. I'm a um, registered dietitian, a certified dietitian nutritionist in the state of Connecticut. Um, so what is a dietitian, first of all? Uh, RDs are licensed health professionals who hold at least a bachelor's, bachelor's degree, excuse me. Um, this is actually moving to a master's level in 2024 uh, in nutrition and dietetics. So um, this must come from an accredited program. And RDs also um, complete 1,200 supervised practice hours and take a board uh, exam, national board exam in nutrition. Um, and they are also required to keep up with continuing education every year. So um, registered dietitians are um, definitely the experts when it comes to nutrition, and they always provide uh, evidence and research-backed information to hopefully all of their all of their clients. So um, I love working at Smilo. I think that the oncology population is really great, um, and you know it's a it's a really fulfilling and um, needed uh position within within smilo so um i'm glad to be the one to do it so the objectives for tonight um so i want to discuss the potential changes that happen to our bodies um, after cancer treatment and how this might relate to weight or um you know physical changes emotional changes mental changes um, I want to discuss how diet and exercise can be individualized to meet certain goals, um, whether that's weight maintenance or weight loss or even weight gain after cancer treatment. Um, I want to discuss some current trends in the diet industry and kind of um, bust any myths or answer any questions that you guys might have. I know that there's lots of information out there when it comes to nutrition and wellness, and um, it's always good to have a a resource, you know, somebody who knows, you know, what the most current research is on, on all of this. So um, I want to help cancer survivors and, you know, people who are going through treatment feel more autonomous and confident in their bodies. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So how can your body change with cancer treatment? So um, of course, you know, after any sort of cancer treatment, your body can change in terms of weight, um, weight loss or weight gain. There are certain um, treatments that definitely inhibit your ability to eat enough. So we deal with a lot of um, or we see a lot of weight loss when it comes to treatment. But we also see, um, you know, people who gain a little bit of weight during treatment, whether that's from medications or um, you know, sometimes they'll give you a steroid when you are getting chemo, so that can increase your appetite. Um, you know, those physical changes to your body can be really, um, you know, they can be either subtle or they can be a little bit more drastic, but nonetheless, they are um, definitely, you know, can be taxing on on someone. Um, you know, I'll I'll talk a little bit about hair loss, but, you know, honestly, hair loss is one of those things that um, kind of comes to, uh, it either comes or it doesn't, and it kind of depends on what treatment you're getting, but it definitely can affect someone's um, body image, self-esteem. So want to talk, uh, touch on that a little bit too. Emotional changes, um, stress, fatigue, loss of motivation, uncertainty, these are all emotional changes that can happen with, um, with cancer treatment. It's a, definitely a big undertaking that um, people are going through. Sleep changes, skin changes, these are other things that can happen as well. 
So first, let me talk a little bit about body image, because I don't think I did um, talk, uh, you know, at all about body image last year in my my presentation, but it's definitely very important. Important. Um, Body image is a person's perception of themselves, and um, it can be very tied, very closely tied to self image, which can either be positive, negative. And, um, you know, I, I think I hear a lot from patients that, you know, they just don't feel their best when they're going through treatment. And so it's important to notice how um, body image can shift and it can change and it it can ebb and flow, you know, based on where you are in your um, survivorship and in your treatment course. So um, that's something that we definitely want to be cognizant of is uh, respecting people's self-image and, you know, kind of uh, working through that with them if it's if it's not really a positive thing for them right now. It can also be affected by our environment and, you know, our support system. The people that you have around you also can definitely uh, affect your body image as well. So I want to touch a little bit on this concept. This is kind of a new um, area of nutrition and wellness that is definitely um, growing and, you know, in research and, um, you know, in the nutrition sphere. Health at every size is kind of a... Um, principle that, you know, I, I like to, to use in my practice. Um, it is the belief that aims to promote body acceptance and uh, with the core value that people in larger bodies can be metabolically healthy. So um, when I'm looking at a patient, you know, I'm looking at them as a whole person. I'm not just looking at the weight that comes up on the scale. Um, I'm looking at their blood sugar. I'm looking at blood pressure. I'm looking at cholesterol and vitamin, you know, whether there's a vitamin or mineral deficiency there. Um, I'm looking at electrolytes. I'm looking at all of your labs that I have available to me. Um, you know, and I'm also interviewing you if you're one of my patients about your behaviors. So are you eating fruits and vegetables every day? Are you, um, are you drinking alcohol? Are you smoking? Are you exercising regularly? Are you, um, you know, making a conscious effort to, um, you know, go and, and talk to somebody if you feel that your mental health is not great. You know, I'm, I'm looking at all these behaviors as a more um, comprehensive idea of what your health looks like rather than just the number on the scale. Um, you know, I, I think BMI, which is the body mass index, is, is a useful tool sometimes for doctors. Um, and, and weight can definitely help us with medications and, and things like that, but it definitely is not the only thing. So um, this idea of there can be health at every size um, is, is really important, and I think it's important that we kind of move towards that. So what should you be eating? This is, you know, I, a question I get every single day. Um, it's kind of important to know that, you know, nutrition is very, um, it's not a perfect science by any means. And there's not one specific diet that every single person on the planet should follow. Um, it's also important to notice that in the oncology sphere, there's not a, um, you know, one food or one supplement or um, one diet that can cure your cancer or um, that can, you know, treat it by itself. You know, I, I'm kind of deferring to the doctors. I always tell my patients, I'm here to support you, um, you know, as you go through chemo, radiation, surgery, um, survivorship, you know, I'm here to support you from a nutritional level, but I'm not here to um, contradict a doctor or to, um, you know, say that you should be taking this supplement or eating this food in place of uh, standard treatment. So I want to talk a little bit about macronutrients. So there are three different macronutrients. Um, these are the, the things that all of our foods are made out of. So usually we hear, um, you know, we hear a lot about um, carbohydrates, proteins, and fat, you know, as, um, you know, should you, should you go low carb? Should you go low fat? You know, should you adopt one of these things as your, as your diet and, you um, the the truth is, is that every food is made up of you know one of one or more of these three macronutrients. So carbohydrates are first. 
Um, they're also called starches or sugars. They're found in fruits and vegetables, grains like rice or pasta, dairy products, le uh, legumes, um, snack foods, sugary snack foods, carbohydrates break down into glucose, which it's, is its smallest form. And that is the form that our body uses for energy. So our brain needs glucose, our muscles need glucose, our organs need glucose. Um, and this is the, uh, the most basic energy form that our body uses. So should you cut carbs or go keto or go grain free for, for weight loss? So, um, you know, I'm going to be talking a lot about weight management in this um, presentation. So if that's something that uh, doesn't resonate with you, then, um, you know, it, it kind of can be attributed to, you know, to either situation, weight loss, weight gain. Um, but carbohydrates are our body's primary source of energy, and they have been kind of thought as the enemy of weight loss for many, many years. Um, however, research has shown that when comparing low carb diets to a low fat diet, similar rates of weight loss happen because you're in a calorie deficit. So um, overall calories is kind of really what's important. It's more important to eat be eating the right kind of carbs. So trying to eat more complex carbohydrates, this would be um, things like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, anything that contains fiber over refined grains, such as um, white breads, white pastas, packaged sweets. Not to say that you can't have these things at all, but um, you know you want to be having more of those complex carbohydrates. So the fiber that exists in complex carbohydrates helps to regulate our blood sugar and promote digestion and have more sustainable energy. So you want to be making, you know, they they used to say make half of your, you know, half of your grains whole grains, um, but it's important to be getting, you know, carbohydrates from starchy vegetables or fruits or, you know, other things like that as well. So proteins, this is another one of our macronutrients, the, the second of the three. Um, proteins are also called amino acids. So that's its most basic form. It's building blocks of proteins are called amino acids. Um, they're found primarily in animal products. So chicken, beef, pork, um, fish, eggs, dairy, um, but they're also found in nuts and seeds, legumes, um, things like peanuts, black beans, you know, any, any type of bean. Um, protein is used by the body primarily to rebuild and repair tissues. Um, so it, it is used to maintain your lean body mass, which is your muscle. Um, and it's also used to produce hormones and enzymes that are needed in your body to carry out various processes. So, um, increasing your protein intake is actually a great way to support body fat loss because it helps to increase your lean muscle. So more lean muscle means that your body will burn more calories at rest, which is a good thing. Um, so if you're looking for a kind of more sustainable way to lose fat, try increasing your protein. So why is protein so important? I kind of went over this already, but, um, you know, higher protein levels also help to regulate your blood sugar, which is very important for any patient who is struggling with um, managing their blood sugar, whether they're pre-diabetic or diabetic. Um, you know, eating more protein is kind of like a buddy to carbohydrates. So it helps to slow down um, sugar release into the blood and make your blood sugar levels more sustainable. So, um, you know, if you're looking to bring your hemoglobin A1C down, which is the number that um, shows us your long-term blood sugar uh, control, eating more protein is a great way to do that as well. Eating more protein can also help to reduce fluid buildup or edema in your body. So anyone who's struggling with any sort of fluid on board, um, lymphedema, you know, edema in your legs or in your, um, your feet or your hands, it can help to prevent water going into the um, interstitial space, which is your, your tissues. Um, and inadequate protein intake can lead to fluid accumulation. So you definitely want to be eating enough protein if you are trying to get rid of any fluid that's on board. 
So fats, these are our last um, macronutrient of the three. Dietary fat is the last macronutrient and is responsible for um, energy production as well. So it's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the friend to carbs. Um, it's also responsible for thermoregulation and insulation of the body and hormone production as well. So fats can either be saturated, which are Saturated fats are more found in animal products, so beef, chicken, fish, um, cheeses, and eggs, and tend to be solid at room temperature. So if you isolated that fat um, and you just held it at room temperature, it would appear solid. Whereas unsaturated fats, which are you know healthier fats, um, are more found in vegetable products, so vegetable oils, nuts, and seeds. Um, fish also have unsaturated fats. Avocados are a really great source of um, monounsaturated fats, which I'll kind of go over. Um, so you definitely want more unsaturated fats in your diet. And um, the reason for this is that it helps to, um, you know, keep your heart healthy. And, you know, we always want that. So you want more unsaturated fats than saturated. So I'm going to go over um, two different kinds of polyunsaturated fats. So both of these are, you know, the good fat, they're healthy fats, um, but you have two different types, main types of omega polyunsaturated fats. So omega-6 polyunsaturated fats and omega-3 polyunsaturated fats. So omega-6, they are found in sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn, sesame, soybean oils, meat, and eggs. Um, they're more common in the American diet and they can lead to more inflammation in the body, but there's still no need to avoid them. You still need them. Um, they have great um, immune uh, protective properties. So they're really good for your immune system, um, but they can be a little bit more inflammatory. Omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids are found in fatty fish. So things like salmon, mackerel, and then other things like chia seeds and flax seeds, these are anti-inflammatory and they are less abundant in the American, typical American diet, um, but they definitely help to reduce cholesterol levels, help to reduce um, blood pressure and, you know, kind of cardiovascular related symptoms. Um, so you definitely want to try to increase your omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. So what should your meals look like? So meals should be balanced. Um, half of your plate should always, you know, you try to make it so half of your plate is your non-starchy vegetables. So um, things like salad or broccoli or, um, you know, fresh tomatoes or things like that. The more color, the better. The more color you get on the plate, the more antioxidants you're getting, which help with your immune system, help to fight off disease. Um, you should definitely have a source of lean protein. So whether that's salmon or um, chicken, ground turkey, you know, any sort of lean protein that you want and a source of complex carbohydrates. So this could be rice, this could be a potato, this could be whole grain pasta, this could be a corn tortilla. Um, all of those things are, are perfectly good. So hydration, hydration is also very important. Um, keeping your body hydrated by drinking about half of your body weight in fluid ounces is really important for weight maintenance, your skin health and healthy digestion. Um, signs that you're not getting enough fluids might be you're getting lightheaded, you're feeling more fatigued, you're feeling tired, um, you're having dark color urine when you go to the bathroom. Um, you might have dry skin or you might feel constipated, you might not be able to have a bowel movement. Um, without adequate fluids, weight loss can be hindered because your digestive system will have a tougher time um, breaking down nutrients and doing its job efficiently. So you definitely, if you're looking to lose weight or lose body fat, you definitely want to be more well hydrated. Um, try to avoid sugar sweetened beverages, things like regular soda, fruit juices, um, even juices that say no sugar added will still have sugar because of the fruit. Um, so they're, they're still kind of considered a refined sugar because they don't have any fiber. So, um, a question that I get a lot is, um, should I be, uh, and this is mostly people who are going through active treatment, but, um, should I be juicing? Should I do, you know, what, uh, should I put fruit and vegetables in a juicer and drink that? 
And, um, you know, I, I kind of tend to tell people to steer away from that or to focus more on eating more whole fruits and vegetables, because when you just have the juice form of anything, you're, you're not really getting all that fiber, um, which is super important in, you know, helping with digestion and helping with nutrient absorption. So, um, you know, you definitely want to be focused more on whole foods and less on the, on the juices. So alcohol. So alcohol is a big, big part of, you know, everyday life, um, whether it's, you know, having a, a glass of wine with dinner or um, going out on the weekends or, you know, having a, a dinner party with friends. Alcohol is is a huge industry, especially in the United States. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> it's strong evidence does point to the link between alcohol and six different types of cancers. So this includes breast cancer, colon cancer, um, esophageal and gastric cancers, liver cancer, and head and neck cancer. Um, alcohol also contains about seven calories per gram, which means that it's um, very dense in calories, but it doesn't really do a lot in terms of energy production for our body. So our body can't really use those calories to get us through our day. Um, they're kind of just, you know, in your body and, and, and that's it. Um, alcoholic drinks can also be very high in sugar, depending on what you're drinking. They can lead to body fat gain, which can also increase your risk of, of developing cancer. Um, so definitely think about limiting or removing alcohol from your diet to maintain a healthy body uh, during and after your, your cancer treatment. Alcohol is one of those things that um, if you're trying to lose weight or lose body fat, that that's kind of the, the first thing that you should um, think about adjusting. So now I want to talk a little bit about movement. You know, I'm I'm a big exerciser myself. I, um, I you know, I always try to get some sort of movement in during the day, whether that's, um, you know, a, a, a weightlifting session or a walk or, you know, a, I'm a big runner too. Um, but so aerobic movement is, you know, walking, running, biking, swimming, anything that gets your heart rate going. Um, it can help with weight loss by putting you in a calorie deficit. I would say that if you're looking to lose a, a large amount of weight um, or body fat, that walking is definitely uh, better than jogging or running anything that's super high intensity because you are preserving your muscle mass. Um, you know, you're not raising your stress levels and you are uh, putting your body in the most optimal um kind of space for, for fat loss. So walking is definitely very important. Um, you know, and, and when, when you walk, you know, more so than, than you run, um, you know, you're, you're again, not producing those stress levels. So, um, you're kind of keeping those low and, and keeping your body at, at less of an intense state. So strength and resistance training. So this would be your anaerobic movement. Um, strength training involves any movement that puts your body under load. So, um, you know, this is really important for, um, you know, maintaining your, your muscle mass, but also your bone health. So later in life, um, especially women, women in the United States are kind of at the biggest risk for um, osteopenia, osteoporosis, which is caused by decreased bone density. So a really good way to prevent that and keep your bones strong is actually to put your body under um, as much load as, as you can handle, as you can tolerate. So when people ask, you know, how much do I do? How much strength training should I do? Should I be lifting every single day? No, you don't have to. You can absolutely do this two, three times a week um, and still reap the benefits of, of strength training. So what's the best kind of exercise? If you're looking to manage your weight and reduce body fat and preserve your lean body mass, um, low to moderate intensity exercise, sustained aerobic exercise, such as walking or biking for 30 minutes. Um, I always suggest walking. I think that now as the weather gets nicer, um, you know, going for a 30 minute walk after dinner is kind of a staple in our household. So um, we'll always be doing that. And then strength training, like I said, two to three times a week um, can really help to build muscle and increase metabolism. 
Um, so, you know, a combination of these two things can really put you in a good spot. So now I want to talk a little bit about sleep. Um, sleep is so, so important for building and maintaining a healthy body. So um, I actually was, oops, sorry, I was looking at a study um, that was actually uh, published in 2022, and they were looking at um, people that were dealing with disturbed sleep patterns in both quality and quantity. So they were looking at people who were getting less than seven hours per night, um, you know, broken sleep, sleep that was just kind of interrupted. Um, and what they found was that people who were getting disturbed sleep had a had a higher intake of high energy foods, you know, snack foods, processed foods, um, and an evident dysregulation in appetite control. So they either felt, um, you know, not as hungry in the morning, but were overeating later in the day. Um, and, you know, they were they were just not uh, not feeling their best. Um, individuals who slept more than uh, or at least seven hours per night, however, did have higher success with weight loss efforts. Um, and they were able to kind of sustain that weight loss, you know, as they kept uh, their their sleep hygiene, we call it sleep hygiene, um, you know, at least seven hours trying to uh, reduce distractions during sleep. So putting your phone away like 30 minutes before you go to bed, turning off all the lights, making sure it's a relaxing atmosphere. Um, sleep quality is definitely very, very important. So kind of linked to the the whole sleep thing, um, stress is is definitely another factor when kind of looking at um, if you're wanting to lose weight. So cortisol, like I was kind of talking about before, is your body's stress hormone, and it's produced by your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. Um, and cortisol is released in times of stressful situations. So too much stress in the body can make your body hold on to fat, um, can make your body hold on to weight because your your body thinks that you're in survival mode. So um, it doesn't want to get rid of that fat and, um, you know, it, it kind of holds on to it. So aim to reduce your stress by definitely getting enough sleep, practicing mindfulness, exercising, reading, um, meditating, talking to friends, family, or even a therapist can also really help to reduce stress levels. Um, you know, I think especially here in America, we, we work long days, we work long hours, we're not getting enough rest. Um, you know, so it's, it is really important to kind of address the stress. Um, you know, if you're, if you're looking at any sort of, um, uh, body recomposition or anything like that. So caffeine intake kind of relates to stress and sleep. So before reaching for your fourth or fifth cup of coffee or your energy drink, um, definitely try to address, you know, think think mindfully about how much sleep you're actually getting at night. Um, you know, before you are, I tell this to athletes all the time. I've, I've counseled athletes before and they're, they'll ask me, you know, oh, should I take an energy drink or an energy supplement before I work out? And I say, well, you know, before you think about doing that, let's let's look at how much sleep you're getting and are you getting restful sleep? And, um, you know, are you addressing your stress levels? Are you taking the time to kind of calm down after you're working out? So caffeine intake is one of those things that um, that we look at. And, you know, I, I suggest no more than, you know, maybe three or 400 milligrams of caffeine, which is, you know, two or 300 or two or three cups of coffee, excuse me, a day. Um, so definitely try to be smart about your caffeine uh, intake. I know that me, myself, if I have a, a latte, you know, after 12 o'clock or one o'clock in the afternoon, I am not getting good sleep. So um, definitely be mindful of that. So um, five ways to manage your cancer fatigue. So fatigue is one of those things that I hear all the time from patients. You know, they just, um, they don't have motivation, they feel like they're tired all the time, um, you know, and this can be a, a real um, inhibitor when, you know, when people are trying to lose weight or trying to manage their, um, their body fat. So definitely don't pack your schedule too full, be comfortable saying no to the things that you don't want to do, 
um, you know, kind of try to set boundaries with people, you know, tell them that you are, um, you know, maybe going through a, a tougher time and, and you, you, you know, need to set that boundary. Um, hydrating adequately, making sure that you're getting at least half of your body weight in fluid ounces every day. Um, that means that if you are 150 pounds that, you know, 75 ounces, that's kind of your number to try to hit. Um, definitely add exercise and light movement into your routine. So again, simple as going for a 20, 30 minute walk, um, eating a protein rich breakfast. So, um, I was looking at another study that was looking at a threshold of, um, protein intake in the morning. That was, they were looking at insulin resistance and which is also related to, to weight loss. But, um, what the researcher found was that eating, 25 to 30 grams of protein in the morning um, definitely set people up for success for later on in the day. So they were um, eating well at their other meals, not just their breakfast. They were feeling energized. They were feeling, um, you know, just better all around. Um, the last one, definitely get your vitamins and minerals. Try to get um, all of your nutrients from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, rather than taking processed supplements. So um, supplements is a kind of a question that I get all the time. What should I be taking? What should I not take? Um, you know, I'm always going to err on the side of um, talk to your doctor, talk to your oncologist, talk to your primary care physician, talk to your endocrinologist if you have one, Um you know, when you're, when you're wanting to take anything new, uh, anything that you haven't taken before, or, um, you know, if you're looking at, uh, any sort of supplement just for general health, you want to make sure that you run that by your doctor, but definitely try to get your nutrients from your whole foods. So should you be taking supplements? So this is uh, one of the questions that I get all the time. I think that right now, uh, a lot of these, um, greens powders and reds powders and uh, are, you know, these little capsules with, um, you know, different nutrients, fruits and vegetables in them uh, are very popular. And what, I, you know, I'll kind of say the same thing about, um, about juices is that they are very expensive um, and they don't have any fiber in them. So they're not, um, they're not good for digestion. They're kind of just you know, they're, they're not well regulated, um, you know, and they're kind of an expensive way to, to not know what you're getting or putting into your body. So, um, in order to get all of your necessary vitamins and minerals, try to eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Frozen is totally fine. Um, e you know, even canned vegetables, as long as you're, you know, being mindful of sodium, rinsing things off when you, um, when you know that there's a lot of sodium there, but fresh, frozen, uh, all vegetables are better than no vegetables. So um, that's kind of my motto. All right. So now I'm going to um, kind of open up the, the floor for any questions. Um, let me just see if I can look at the chat box. Does anybody have any questions now? I, I'm totally free to answer. Oh, we got a question. I'm hoping everybody can hear me. So um, we got a question from Debbie. Um, what do you recommend for a high protein breakfast? Great question. So um, high protein breakfast. So I, um, I, I mean, we all know that eggs are very expensive right now, but I love eggs. Um, I think, you know, if you're trying to watch your cholesterol, um, you know, the research is kind of limited when it comes to eggs and cholesterol. 
Um, but, you know, if you're wanting to reduce your cholesterol levels, doing one egg and then mixing in maybe some uh, liquid egg whites, that's a really good way to get some more protein in. Um, Greek yogurt is a very, very good source of uh, protein. I think there are yogurts now that have up to 15 grams of protein and one of the little serving sizes. So perfectly um, great option. Another good option for high protein is cottage cheese. I know cottage cheese is one of those things that not a lot of people love, but I love it. And there's, you know, good ways to, to use it that, you know, you can kind of get used to it. So um, that would be my suggestion, but there's, there's still protein and things like, um, you know, things that you kind of don't realize too, like whole grain toast that has a little bit of protein in each slice, probably about six, six to seven grams of protein in a slice of whole grain toast. So, um, you know, there's, there's ways to kind of build, uh, your protein intake in the morning without really noticing it. Um, so I have another question from Joanna. Can you talk about appetite and nausea? So this is, um, you know, a, a question that I get often, um, probably more from people who are in active treatment. Um, you know, appetite changes are are pretty difficult. I think that um, they can be related to whether you're getting chemo or radiation. There are certain types of chemo that are harder on your appetite than others. Um, when you're having problems with low appetite, you know, I always tell people, eat the foods that you like. Um, you know, don't really try to try anything new at, at that time. Try to stick with what you know. Um, eating smaller meals, you know, letting yourself put your food on a smaller plate and try to have, you know, more plates throughout the day versus uh, presenting yourself with a big overwhelming meal. Um, but, you know, definitely small, more frequent meals. That's a great way to um, to kind of manage your your appetite when you, when you have low appetite. Um, nausea is, a, is another one of those things that we deal, we deal with a lot, um, at Smilo. So, uh, you know, ginger is a really good, um, uh, a really good kind of thing to try to introduce more into your diet when you're dealing with nausea, ginger ale, uh, ginger tea, both of those can be very, very settling to the stomach. Um, and again, trying to, you know, stay away from like the spicy fried foods, foods that have a lot of, um, a lot of fat, they can make nausea a little bit worse. So trying to stay more with the bland stuff when you're dealing with nausea. Um, let's see, I have another question from Marcella. Hi, Marcella. Um, so three meals a day, all of them have to be full meals. I'm not used to big dinners. So, um, that's totally fine. I think that, um, you know, many people have, uh, different, um, schedules when it comes to eating. So, um, you know, maybe your breakfast is, is a little bit bigger and then you have a, you know, smaller lunch and then a smaller dinner. All of that is great. As long as you are, um, you know, meeting your, your needs as far as your calories and your protein. And if you, um, you know, if you want to have kind of front load your, your nutrition for in the morning and have a bigger breakfast, kind of set yourself up for the day. That's a really great way to manage your weight. Um, you know, and, and having a big dinner and going to sleep with, you know, too full of a stomach can, can lead to some discomfort. So, um, you know, do, do what works for you. Try to, try to tailor it to what your day looks like. Um, I have another question. I drink a lot of fluids, but I go to the bathroom at night every three hours or so. I do sleep for more than seven hours. Great. Awesome that you're sleeping for more than seven hours. Um, you know, I think as, you know, as we get older, going to the bathroom more at night is, is something that a lot of people deal with. Um, so try to drink more fluids, you know, when you wake up in the morning, um, you know, try to, if you're, feeling like you're getting up often to go to the bathroom uh, later at night, try to stop, maybe stop drinking fluids after dinner um, or after, you know, seven, eight o'clock. Um, give yourself a little bit of a window before you go to bed. See if that helps. Um, 
I have another question from Ruth. How much Greek yogurt or cottage cheese should Greek yogurt be plain? Half a cup, one cup. So um, I think one cup of Greek yogurt has about 12 grams of protein. So, um, you know, that that could be uh, your your serving size. I like the little individual cups, like the little five, I think it's five and a half ounces for the cups. Um, cottage cheese, kind of same thing. It's a little bit more dense in protein, but I think um, the serving size for cottage cheese is maybe half a cup or a cup. I'll have to look at that for you and get back to you. But, um, you know, as if you're, if you're having that as your protein source in the morning, then, um, you know, it's, it's not super caloric. So I would have something else with it too. I would have, um, you know, a piece or two of whole grain toast, uh, maybe some cereal or some fruit with it as well. Um, but it really depends. It depends on your weight. It depends on, um, you know, how much protein you need during the day. It's kind of individualized. Let's see. Do I have any other questions? Thank you guys so much for, for letting me present for you. And, um, you know, I, I definitely want to uh, hear more from you guys if you, um, you know, you're cancer survivors and you are uh, at Smilo and you want to talk to me and have more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, then I am totally available. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Okay, I have another response from um, Mr. Meta. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, let's see. Awesome. Diet, moderate exercise, lost 30 pounds. That's great. I think that, um, you know, sustained, um, slow weight loss is always better than rapid, fast weight loss. I think that um, I get a lot of a lot of questions like, oh, how much weight should I be losing, um, you know, at, at one time? And uh, it's I think slower is always better. Slow and steady wins the race. All right. Oh, Debbie. Um, so let's see. So I hope everybody can see my screen still. Um, but I have a. Let's see, so. My, if you'd like to schedule a nutrition visit and you are a patient um, at Smilo, I'm available to meet with you. Um, my phone number is here, 203-666-3574. That's my office phone number. And my email is there too. So Debbie, if you want to take a picture of this slide, you're absolutely more than welcome to. All right, let's see. So I'm going to stop um, sharing my screen, but um, Sally and Terry, thank you so much for um, allowing me to present. And um, definitely, you know, I'd, I'd love to, to meet with, with everyone if you, uh, if you want to. So um, thanks, Elise. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks so much, Sally. Thank you, Hannah. We really appreciate your time and all your efforts and hoping to bring this information to our patients. And Absolutely. just so um, everyone knows, this also will has been recorded. Thank you, Terry. And it will be available on our YouTube channel. So thank you Perfect. all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye.